thanks for them. We greet you all saints in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior. We are from Swaziland. Yes, we are from Swaziland. 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 Bongani, this is Noyolo, and this one is my wife. Rebara Tubase, Naki Bongani, Wanaki Yolo, and then Baki Musadiak. It was in the Easter Sunday of 2016 that we came here. May Lika Good Friday, yes, Sunday 2016. We were opportunity to be prayed for by the man of God. Actually, we, we had got married with my wife and we were looking for a child. We had been trying to have one, but we couldn't get one. So we decided to come here to seek God's intervention. Fortunately enough, God located us when the man of God was still moving in the midst of the congregation. Fortunately enough, she gave my wife a testimony, I mean a word of prophecy. She said there was no way that she could conceive without deliverance. And he, he prayed for us. On that very same day, he said to us, we must go and make a baby. And even before he closed the service on that particular day, I still vividly remember the utterances that he said. He said, you must bring that baby boy. I want to dedicate him here in Charis. After so long, we were, have not been coming here more especially because of COVID. We were blessed by God. This is the baby boy that the man of God was talking about. So, it has been in our heart to have another one. Actually, he is now six years. So we have been trying for another one and we were not getting one. <laughs> and I said to my wife, you know, the man of God on that part, in that particular day, I vividly remember what he said. So it might be possible that he, the mere fact that he, we have not uh, go back to Charis to give this testimony. Maybe it is the thing that is hindering us to have another child. So it has been troubling me in my spirit. My wife can attest to that. So that is why I said today we must make it to Charis. So that the man of God can pray for us and we have another one. <laughs> I just want to say to you, church, we are very much grateful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this gift. Indeed, this is a blessing from God. And I want to inspire all of you that are, you are here today. 
that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus Christ that located us in 2016 for this blessing. I want to assure you that he will locate you today. Thank you very much. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brother. Uh, no more locating now. <laughs> yeah, it's you, you see, you see people who don't listen. You don't listen. Okay, brother. You're going to have a baby boy. You must bring this boy to be dedicated here. It's for you to get another one at a time. So you'll never get another child again. No, no way. Because you have tried now. Because how can you... I mean, what if you got another baby? Will you come back? Definitely, maybe I wouldn't be here. That is true. Can you see that? It was in the church that day in Tebisa. Those who remember getting you know, that time. This will happen to you. This, the child and the baby boy. Boom, she fell down. Eh? Huh? And I still remember even, I think you uttered those words three times because even before you closed the service, you said, hey, brother, they remember to bring that baby boy. He's a baby boy. You must bring him here. I want to dedicate him into charis. I was telling one brother, that brother, me, I'm sending you there, but if you marry this woman, you won't be a pastor. If you marry this woman, you won't be a pastor. You went there. Even now, his church is like this. It's like this. He's screaming, ah, you know how many years? It's preaching. But the church is like this. How many years now? The problem, we don't listen. This is our problem today. You don't have instruction. As long as you get a blessing, it matters to you. That this, it have got attachments, that blessing. It have got attachments. I spoke with another brother here. I said, brother, he was telling me that side. Don't invite people in your church. He came to tell me that I've invited people. They are sleeping with everyone in the church. It's a powerful. Uh, what can you say, Baba? <laughs> you know, people, they don't listen. They just say, ah, you know, you know, there was a time, people say, his time is finished. Yeah, it's our time now. We are prophets. It's okay. Yeah, prophet, let's watch. Carry on, prophet, say, let's watch. Let's watch. Go there, slept with everyone. Brother Kevin said, hey, even now, I'm no longer having a church. They were even sleeping with older people. I said, powerful. <laughs> this is a very good anointing. You're anointed. <laughs> you, you know, I want to tell you this. This is the main problem. Right now, I tell you that like I'm telling this man, okay, okay, you see this man, can you stand up, uh, Prophet Kule? Kule, you are going to go around doing businesses, but God has called you, but you're still going to do business. What is happening now? It's true, what God is doing is shocking. 
uh, the business is growing too much. Amen. Too much, too much. And the church is growing too much. Kule was no wiki. He was in our church. You, you, you go everywhere you do business, you travel. And you start to travel. It's true. I've you traveled travel, a lot. Travel, travel, travel. Now, you know, it's a simple thing. I'm telling you something you are seeing opposite. You are believing the opposite. Because this opposite is talking back to you. This man, he built the church. That's the only first church we dedicated. In Charis. He, he became very powerful. I, he came here, I said, brother, I see you work with other pastors. He's Charis, but there will be pastors that will work with him. He came and said, they are pastors. And they are coming. We are doing this. That it will happen. There's no way that God, when He says something, it won't happen, unless if it is ourselves. It will happen. Uh, okay, see that. Uh, let me. Sunday, I spoke with him about funeral. Huh? Yes, yes. What can you mention? Because it's a very touching issue. But you're, you're a child of God. What? Yeah, right. Concerning my mom, yes, yes, uh, he told me that you don't understand why Jesus uh, lost his father before he could come up to the scene. Uh, why sometimes before God can lift people up, they have to lose the one they love. So he only spoke it like that in parable. I was telling you, I said you must know that Jesus lost the father. Why people lose people? Love. I look at him, I saw his heart. That if I tell him his mom, she's about to go. How is he going to get that? So I'm going to want to use this man. But why people lose people they love? When he reached home, how long it took? I think it took a week. Then, yeah, it's a week. Because a week after that, then it happened. And the man passed away. Okay, God bless you. So, sometimes we look at you. There are certain things we won't tell you here. What if I come and see you a rapist? It's like embarrassing you, isn't it? But try to tell you, God loves you. The issue that we have, I want to tell you now. Because of the mess we had in church, you people, you are no longer recognizing the true people. That's the problem we have today. I can bring Andres here. You will see him as Andres. I bring Kule here. He's Kule. I bring Sandile. This one is Sandile. You can't recognize. Is this still the same person who's speaking or God? I'm sure that's what I'm going to say. You are living with people, now you can't see clear. That is why you find people from outside, they're inviting us, hey, come, hey, come, come, come. Right now I've got an invitation from Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia now, that I'm considering to go, because I realize that if you come here, uh, you'll be, will you force this thing to this person? Will you force this thing? Because people now, you find that these are people that God have to open their spiritual eyes. Amen. You find that they, they don't believe. And after their eyes are open, they want to make money. They want to be prophets of money. Go will live with your power. Go will live with your power. So where is the boy? Let's bring that boy. Come. This is a miracle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Come, come, come. What is your name? I'm Snoyolo Tobas. Yes. Stretch your hand to this boy. Father, we forgive his parents. Amen. Let there be a sister. Amen. In Jesus' name. You will have a sister, eh? Yes.
Let me pray for you. Jesus' name. God bless it. I greet you all saints in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are from Swaziland. Uh, we came here, if I'm not mistaken, around April. This very same year, 2023, we gave a testimony of how God located us in 2016 through the anointed servant of the Lord in this place. When God located us through a word of prophecy that my wife received from the man of God. That she couldn't conceive. We shared the testimony when we came here. Now we have a son, six years old. I think those that were here, they can recall. So when we were here around April, again the man of God gave us a word of prophecy. Because our main problem was also a difficulty in conceiving. My wife couldn't conceive a second child. And we had been trying, but to no avail until when we came here to Charis. I still remember vividly when the man of God was praying for my son. He said to him, uh, your sister is coming. And then he prayed for the two of us. And in the course of the service, the man of God gave me words of prophecy. He said to me, once your wife is three months pregnant, you must bring her here because I see something. I don't want a situation whereby she will lose the baby. And then we went so today as we are standing before you we just want to glorify the Lord man of God the prophecy that you gave us has come to pass my wife is three months pregnant what I noticed is that uh, after we came here, we've been waiting for this prophecy to be fulfilled. I remember when we were talking with Mama, we will always say, he, she will always say, hey, Habakkuk, you must remember that the prophecy that you receive is waiting for an appointment time. It will come. So now come on, can you pillar of the Lamb say, "Yeah, but Lamb, now have a good, good, so you will pull over." So prophet, so feeling, so now see me, just now go visit the hospital. So we are grateful to the Lord. We thank God. Brother, how many of you remember this brother? Lift up your hands. You were there that day. Amen. Uh, this brother is a tutu. A real tutu, this brother. If you remember, I was saying things like this. He was not conceiving. He came. We spoke with him. From there, he disappeared for six years. You remember that time? I said, this man is a totally. Now, when he came back to give a testimony, is when he realized that he has finished, what, six years without a child. I says, eh, 
Look at this totu. This is totu. <laughs> so, but we thank God for his life. Uh, we prayed that day. And God now has given uh, his wife. It's true that people who are doing these things are very close to you, my brother. Very close who don't want this woman. And then I told him that three months must come back. We pray for him so that no one will touch the stomach of this lady and the child will grow. We thank God for his life. He's here today. But even though he knows that the child is a girl, me, I'm praying that it must be a boy. <laughs> Look what is happening there. Is there anybody who touch it? I'm praying that this child must be a boy. Why? Because of the attacks that this woman she went through and the hatred that they have against this family. You hear me, sister? Uh, but anyhow, let it happen in Jesus' name. So, after three months, he gave birth. Bring the child. I'll pray for that child again. I want to silence your enemies. You know your enemies? Do you know stadium? Eh? Yes, man of God. A close, very close stadium. There's a place where they go and bath. Very close to the stadium. There. If you can be aware of what is happening or you don't know, the stadium is here. They bath under the bridge. It's like they go down like this. Uh, do you know these people of Swaziland? Yes. This ones? Oh, this ones. You don't know them? I don't know them. Do you know the place I'm talking about? It's called what? Eh? Oh, yes. Mazana. Oh, yes, I know. I know that place. Yes, they go there. They try to attack you attack you, attack you because they say you have money. You. Oh, but I don't have And you money. don't have anything. I don't have you, money. You must, you must wear marata. That, you must wear marata and then, but out well. Uh, they will leave you. Thank so you, Jesus. We are going to silence them. They will realize what they did there. It won't work for you. God bless you. Now you are not a Tsotsi anymore. <laughs> Let's see.